that you say, mom, I have to go. I have a meeting. And she's like, no, no, no. I just have to tell you this one more. I'm like, mom, you understand there are people waiting for me. I have to go. Mom, Hannah's calling. I have to go. I have a meeting at two o'clock. But I just need to tell you this one more thing. I'm like, oh my God. Don't I, ask me to answer that question. You know, no, it's a rhetorical question. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Lynn. Thank you, Donna. Donna. Donna's been talking the whole time. Hi, Donna. She can't talk because she's with a patient, I think. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I apologize for my tardiness. <laughs> I'd like to blame it on my mother, but it's my own damn fault. Oh. Learning to say today, the topic of today's discussion is learning to say no to one's mother. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> and my best just remember your phone has an off button that you don't need anybody's hand to hold to press it. <laughs> that was a huge realization for me. Okay. No, no, no. Nothing okay. needs to happen to just press that little red button. <laughs> Dude, but like, it's okay if you say no once. But then she called back again. She's like, I have to tell you. And I'm like, mom, is there a house burning down? She goes, no, it's about my birthday. I go, mom, it's the 14th. Your birthday's on the 23rd. Can we talk about it? No, I have to tell you right now. Your stepbrother, Peter, is not coming with his wife and his son. So you don't have to worry about that. But, and it just, it went on. So it was like, and I need you to drive the car. I said, of course I'm driving the car into Brooklyn. Okay. So I feel about 12 right now. So give me a moment. I got to collect. I got to go up about 48 oh. to get back to 60. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Very human. Oh. Donna, <laughs> welcome to the family. Very human. Oh my God. So funny. You're the sweetest family. I'm so jealous. <laughs> they're, they're good people. They're, they're, they're so good. sweet. You're so blessed. <laughs> Jill. Hi, baby. Hello, love. I How miss you that? guys in the morning. I Daylight know. savings time is kicking my butt. I oh can't, my God, right? I can't now, do it's, it. now it's three hours instead of two. No, it's four hours instead of three. What? It was three. And now it's four. <laughs> so oh, no. No. Yeah. yeah. I'm oh, three you hours. Don't have daylight savings where you are, Joe. Yeah, we do. Mentioned. So we moved back another hour. So when you guys are at uh, noon, I'm at nine a.m. No, but if yours also changed and ours also changed, then it should be the same as yeah, three. still yeah, three, but, unless but you're in that weird Arizona thing. Yeah, but no. now that's Maybe true. But it's, my it's body is still not oh, acclimated. Yeah, yeah, yeah to the daylight savings. No, I get it. So it feels it. like four hours earlier instead of three if I get up and try to catch it. Okay, so oh. I'm gonna turn the tables on all of you right now. Um, Jill, I have a raging headache and I feel like okay. vomiting and crying. Would you be willing to do psychic surgery with me? I would be delighted. It, I, you know how much I love it. So. I do. I do. So Jill is someone that has been with me for a year and a half. She is the best student I have ever trained. Oh, shut uh, up. Um, she's deeply in denial about her abilities. Um, she, oh. in past life healing that we did, we found out that she actually was the one who taught me everything that I know. I'm just, whew. I'm in the middle of packing everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and like just purging stuff and saying, I'm not taking this and I'm not taking that and letting go of stuff and having people try to negotiate my beautiful, expensive furniture for far less than its value and being, you know, can I please come and pick it up and do a payment plan? And I said, okay, what would you bring in cash? Oh, nothing, but I could pay you on Friday. And I'm like, well, then pick it up on Friday. You know, like, I'm sorry, you don't get stuff for free. And then being upset. Um, like people, like things that have been valuable to me, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure, things that are valuable to me. And people are like, can I offer you $110 for that $250 beautiful cabinet that you have? And I'm like, I paid 400 for it. Is that the lowest you'll go? And so then other people, you know, who are like, here's the cash, you know, I'm on my way. 
So what do you think is beneath, underneath? My this? attachment, my attachment, my okay. attachment to things, my attachment to my body. Um, yeah. I, I ate cooked food the past two days and I felt really sick from it. And I had my celery juice this morning and then I was heating up some food that was left over, some eggplant and tofu. And Jesus very clearly said to me, eat raw food the rest of the week, like just do smoothies and juice. You need your strength for the move. And so we sold the dining room table and chairs. We literally had to pull a table off the back deck to use the table to sit down on. And then we have these two chairs that we're supposed to sell, but they didn't. And so think like we have this makeshift furniture, which I'm like, where are we going to eat? <laughs> so um, all the ways in which I've processed things, all the ways in which I had decorated the home, all the ways in which like the energy was used to flowing, like Astro, we pulled everything out of the kitchen. It's all over the floor in the dining room as we're packing it. And Astro's like, meow, like what's going on here? Meow. And I'm like, I know. Meow. So there's just this, and then this headache just came up upon me, this whole thing with my mom of like, she's like, Lynn, this is really important because, you know, it's her birthday and it's really important to her. It's going to be 10 of us and it's going to be a big thing. And it was just really, and so I, it's like, I had to make time to make what was really important to my mom, important to me. And I really struggled with it instead of just being like, mom, you know, I have the graciousness and, I, and I'll help you. And, uh, So just let me forgive myself for a moment because it wasn't the most important thing to me. This was the most important thing, to me, you know, um, it's attachment mom, you know, that's not important to me, but it was important to her. This is important to me, you know? So, um, this feeling of, I don't know what anything is for. Everything that I thought is important is suddenly not important anymore. Like it gets put away in a, box and storage somewhere and it used to be something that was important to me and it's just not going to be important to me anymore and then my question is do I really even need anything that I've put away in storage you know pulled out you know I recently went through the same thing I know you did me. yeah exactly and I'm taking yeah. away from your experience but the, the exact same thing happened and when I went to go throw everything in the box in the boxes to put away for staging to sell our house it was like Ugh. And then within a short period of time, I don't even remember what it was there. It didn't matter what was packed in boxes. I could have never seen it again and wouldn't have cared. Right. The psyche is just crazy uh, powerful. Exactly. So I have I joked. I sorry to interrupt, but on the same note, I joked with my mom years ago because I moved once and I said, Mom, I was unpacking and I knew I just needed to throw all this stuff out when I was putting stuff back in the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a common thing in humanity, you know. Attachment changes. Certain things are important at certain times, and then others they're just not serving us anymore, or they've served their purpose, you know? Exactly. And I'm finding that there are things I've outgrown, like there's now this clothing that doesn't fit me anymore because it's too loose. Like when I was in the double XLs and even the, the XLs. Hey, Donna. How are you, love? Hi, Donna. Hi, sweet girl. We can't hear you. You're still muted, baby. Sorry. My hair's just now growing back. I gifted it all away in December. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Pretty so that's young. the reason why my hair's so short. <laughs> how incredible. Wow. Amazing. I'm wow. a 26-year cancer survivor. Wow. Wow. And so my gift back to the universe was something very dear and precious to me. That's incredible. Oh my God. But I'm um, so identified with my hair. It's great right <laughs> now. Talk about the, giving up a tattoo. Me too. Oh God, no um, it, wow. When you were talking about all, you know, y'all moving and different things, um, I'm, I'm originally from Texas. Where? And uh, North Texas, Northeast Texas. Um, I used to live in Nakona for two and a half years. <gasps> Did you really? The Kona Boot Factory. I still have two pair. Oh, I went to Wichita fun. Falls. How fun. Oh my God. Um, yes. Where were I you? Did, I did traveling nursing through Nakona. One of my sisters actually lived in Nakona. Oh my God. How fun. And, uh, but one of my cousins had lived out there and that's how I met her. She's one of my sisters in spirit. But, um, but anyways, um, 
I, uh, I actually lived uh, a little east of that, uh, up around the Sherman, Denison, McKinney, mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. sm and the small towns and everything, because I traveled for the past 15, 20 years doing hospice. Wow. And God. Uh, God so you. it, um, but I just, you know, I can identify with working the two and three jobs and, and all that kind of stuff and being on call 24-7 my spirit journey called me here to where I am in Northern uh, California in Crescent city, California. Mm. Um, it had called to me like for three years and I finally was like, okay, I'm going to go. And I gave up three quarters of everything I owned packed yeah. only what I could fit in my truck, yep. me and my fur baby. Mm -hmm. And she's a senior and everything. So she's a big mama. She's a Rottweiler Rhodesian Ridgeback. Wow. Wow. And I came here not knowing, but two people. This is my senior for baby. He's 11 oh, years old. How gorgeous. And he's hiding out in the, in the guest room because he wants. Oh, yes. To do oh, but yes, so I mean, it was just, y'all were just telling all. And I was just like, this is all pulling at my heartstrings. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'll share because it's like, share, share. I'm like, no, I'm okay. <laughs> You know what? I think that what your message, what the message that you are bringing me is like, it's all going to be okay. Yeah. This is the moment. And Jesus keeps saying to me, breathe. He said, I really need to eat cleanly this week so that all the energy that you would normally put into eating crap food is going to go into what's, you know, this transformation that's happening. And the truth is, I have no idea where I'm going to end up and where I'm really being drawn to right now of all places in San Diego. And I have. I have um, a girlfriend who's like, I'll move there with you, my friend Claire. And yeah. uh, then I, I just found out another friend named Camelia just moved there. Another friend named Elizabeth just bought land there. And so I'm just feeling like, and it's two hours from, from uh, Palm Springs, which is where a bunch of friends are. It's just another hour, I think, to get out to where you are, Jill. I'm looking it up right now. San Diego to, to Vegas. <laughs> oh, is that where you're moving to? Yeah, I think I'm going to end up in San Diego. Oh, that's wild. That's awesome. Yeah. That now makes I'm like me happy. From there. I know you'll be so, Hannah will be so close. Yeah, I'll. Uh, Donna, Donna, are yeah. you happy you did the move? Like that you just picked up and left Rock and yes. Roll? Yeah. Isn't it's, it so freeing? Can you see that? When? It was. Yeah. Five hours. Five, five and a half hours. hours. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, I. Uh, when I was driving from Texas, I had friends that lived in Campo, so I, I stayed the night you. there, and then, uh, like, a, a day later after resting and everything, uh, then I made it here, and, um, you know, it was an 18-hour drive, but, yeah, it was, it was definitely very long. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, Lynn, are we going to do this on you or what? Yes, please. I, I don't mean to crack the whip here. I love the girl talk, but let's be productive. This is productive. So, um, Jill, we're going to do psychic surgery on her. It's only an hour and 15 minutes to fly from, uh, from Vegas to San Diego or San Diego to Vegas. Yeah, it's super, super That's short hop. <laughs> Ooh, all right, so I got a headache in my cranium. Oh, it's interesting. It looks like a purple bowl, like upside down on my head. And it's it's just like outside the perimeter of the head. It's it's interesting. It's made of plastic and metal together. Like it's metal on the outside with a plastic, a plastic candy coating. Um, wow. It weighs way. about 73 pounds. It's really really heavy okay and then um, uh what is there a temperature or, or yeah it's interesting texture? metal is cold on the inside okay but it's like warmer plastic on the outside but the whole thing's it's not warm it's on the cooler side like you know 68 degrees or something like that but it's okay. the metal on the inside is really cold ouch it's it's yeah. it oh interesting so it has little metal spikes on the inside that press into my brain and right. they retract and then they expand. And so it, it's got this kind of pulsating, like 
pulsating pain. Thank you. Mm. <clears throat> so take a deep go ahead. Take a deep breath in and allow the known what the purpose is of it to be known. Uh, it's, it's suppression. Suppression in order to not react. Beautiful. And what are some of the feelings and emotions that are surrounding it? You can't hang up on your mother. <laughs> My father saying to me, you can say anything to me, but you cannot say fuck you, to which I said, fuck you. <clears throat> you can't say fuck you to your parents. That's in there. Um, so take, take a minute when you said um, you can't hang up on your mother and just breathe that in and repeat that. I can't hang up on my mother. Not I, you. You can't hang up on your mother. Like someone's telling me, you know, you can't hang up on your mother. Oh, yeah. Watch me. Sounds like Ryan talking. Oh, my God. Ooh. Can't hang up on your mother. You can't say fuck you to your parents. And I'm like, I can say anything I want. Good. What other feelings and emotions? I'll show you. I'm an adult. All 12 years old of me. You know, like very feeling about so yeah, feeling about twelve. So, all right, let's go go into twelve year old. When you were twelve years old, and you I'm, were with your mother, a fight with my mom. Yeah, where are you? In in the apartment that we used to live on Oakwood Road. What happened? It was about making my bed. She's like, make your bed. And I'm like, that's the stupidest thing because you just got to go back in and mess it up again. You don't make your bed. Why do I have to make my bed? Screaming. And she, she said, I was screaming at her. And she's like, you can't yell at your mother. I said, I can do whatever I want. And running out of the door and running outside and crying and packing up, like packing up. Oh my God. I had a paper bag and I like put my clothes in the paper bag and I ran away. And I walked over to my best friend Kelly's house. I was like, I had just, I had started menstruating at 11. So this was all very hormonal for me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my, it was just this very, very emotional. I ran away to Kelly's and then my mother shows up and she goes, come on, we're going home. And I'm like, no. Oh my God. You, you don't get to run away. Wow. So you said, she, you said she did not have. She has this yeah. old white Rambler station. Old white Rambler station wagon. So you said, I have, why do I? Like, part of me, part of me, um, part of me like, just surrender. Like I, I melted into the, I can't say what I want to anybody. You know, right. that point where you're like, my life is not my own. I can't say what I want. I can't like where you give up, you know? So <sighs> from the beginning, will you tell the story one more time? And see if any other my mom was screaming at me to make my bed and I said no it doesn't make any sense because you just get right back into it and I took a paper bag and I took clothes out of my dresser and I walked out the front door and I went over to my best friend Kelly's house and I was just I was crying there was definitely some like em uh, hormonal stuff that was going on you know? mm -hmm. I was what seventh grade we were still living at the apartment good thank you before we moved to the house by the way you feel like that's complete she's just a bully sometimes she's just she tells everybody what they have to do all the time and then they're like thank god i'm not like that Take a 
big, deep breath in. She's a bully. Thank God I'm not like that. And just allow that awareness in your body to feel it. There's this like intense pain in my cheekbones, you know? Like wanting to screen and your like jaws wired shut or something like you can't, you can't express yourself. You can't be, you, you can't get away. She said, you can't run away. And I said, daddy did. Like my father had left us. We hadn't heard from him. Wow. Yep. That was during the, the time period where he left for three years and we had no contact. Yeah. So there's a, your father connection in here too. So just allow that awareness to the connection of all of these things and feel what it feels like. It's beautiful. She was just doing the best she could, honestly. She still does. She's so excited to have the family come together for her birthday. You know, and I, like, I want to give her that. I want to give her that time. But she called, it was like 1.57. And I thought, oh God, I got to get off this phone. And yeah, it didn't happen. You know, and then I beat myself up for that. I'm like, I'm not living as my word. I was late. Look at all the energy that's being released out of you right now. It's beautiful to see. All that yawning is just energy being released. Yeah. So just as a learning, a teaching moment, what we do is we come to these crises in our lives and we, we take that identity, those words that we've chosen to label the event, and we post note them to us and call them us. And so they're stuck to us. And they remain stuck to us until we're willing and able to process them through and look at them and feel them and be aware of them. And then they move through you and they're no longer attached to you, identifying you as these feelings or whatever emotions that we've, we've attached to us. I'm ready to turn it light. <clears throat> Do it. Um, so on on your we'll take a deep breath in, surround that helmet on your head with beautiful loving energy. Surround it with love that's with from within. And then when you're ready, take another beautiful breath in and slide it off from away from your body. It's white. And then Another breath in, what you do is you ask them to turn it white and hand it back up to God. And then one of your beautiful guides will come in and ask them to touch or use a wand, a fairy wand, to touch that place that you remove that energy. And we want to replace it with beautiful love and light. So you touch that energy. You ask the masters or angels to come or the fairy wand to come and tap that place. Yeshua yeah, sure. just stood behind me and he put his hands on my head. And it's just, everything just went golden. Fills it up with a new energy. Thank you. Jill, thank you. Thank you. What about the jaw? It was all connected. It's all it was all connected. Okay. Well, good. Thank you all for being witnesses. Thank you for holding me in a field of love. I really appreciate that. Thank you. You are for so me. loved. You're so loved and supported. Like, I mean, possibly more than anybody I've ever known in my life. Like, Lynn's so cute. Well, I don't know where I'm going to end up. You're going to Brooklyn. <laughs> exactly. We're going to figure it all out. Between Brooklyn. Brooklyn and Huntington. And then I have a feeling by June, I'm going to be in San Diego. So I'm excited. We'll figure it out. Enjoy the process, honey. You know, no one likes moving. It's so disheveling and scatterbrain and just so much work, but enjoy the process. You know, that's my request of you. Like really en enjoy the movement of the energy and uh, like allowing yourself to let go of things that you don't need anymore. It's all going in the right direction. That's, that's I, my perception. 
thank you. I, Lynn, give myself permission to get rid of the clothes in my closet that I have not worn in a year. Yeah. I, Lynn, give myself permission to give to get rid of the clothes in my closet that are too big for me, being afraid that I'm going to put the weight back on. Yeah. And I, Lynn, give myself permission to get rid of shoes that I haven't worn in four years, thinking that, that someday I'm going to be putting on a suit and high heels again. I can't wear high heels. You guys, yeah. her shoe collection is pretty insane. I have but, to say. I, you know, <laughs> I had 83 shoes and boots and everything. My mom goes, you have two pair of feet. Like, how do you wear 83 pairs of shoes? So I went I down to 40. <laughs> and it was crazy. I went down to 40. Anyway, it's all good. Thank you all so much. Donna, thank you for participating in my healing. I love you all madly. This is such a precious treat for me. I truly, <laughs> truly appreciate it. Happy Monday. You are beautiful. I love you, Lynn. Well, I love you too. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, uh, here comes Mal Malga's or Zappa, right as we're leaving. All right, let's tell her that we're done and, and to come back on Wednesday. Wednesday's gonna be really fun. Wednesday's gonna be um, manifestation. So listen to this. Hi, lovely. Um, so I'm gonna be teaching a class on the 30th of the month. It's gonna be a Wednesday. And I'm gonna be teaching a class called Manifestation. It's Egyptian high magic, the art, the true art of manifestation. And Hathor and Isis are gonna be channeling through me, helping me teach the class. It's gonna be remarkable. And, um, you know, if you wanna know more about it, I thought Hathor was gonna be teaching it with me, but Isis has shown up and she and I are developing this really, really gorgeous friendship together. So there's a dear friend of mine named Yumi who lives in Hawaii. And Yumi does cranial sacral work on me. And she wrote to me today and she said, listen, I just wanted to let you know that I tried to do some cranial sacral work on you, but I was blocked from entering your energy field in the beginning by this really powerful energy that was surrounding you from Hathor and Isis. I felt like they didn't want me to interrupt whatever it was that they're doing with you. And then uh, they relented when I asserted that I was there per, per your request. And then she says, do you remember the time when you were just as powerful or even more powerful than they were, when you created and manifested before you came to earth. So that's some of the stuff that's gonna be coming through. I'm very, very excited. Um, Mal, we just finished up my love and I've gotta go, but um, please come join us on Wednesday or on Friday. Uh, Cause we start at two o'clock rather than, than 2.30, okay? All right, my love to all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah. Mal, did you have a question or anything that you wanted to tell us? Are you good? I'm okay. I'm okay. I just wanted to join and see like how things are working out. I yeah. have the same question for her before she jumped off. I um, It's funny. Today I had a really bad headache. I was late because I was in a conversation with my mom and I couldn't get off of the phone. And so I came in with this really big headache. So they actually helped me today. Jill did the process with me. So I thank you very much for that. Just so you know, this healer is constantly doing her own healing as well. I think that's Absolutely. such an important, you know, and I'm, I'm authentic. Like I don't try to sit here and look pretty all the time. I like have gray hair and I need to wash my hair and you know, I'm, my lashes aren't on and I don't have my makeup on and I'm not fancy, but I am as God created me. And you know, today I, I needed this process. And so I thank you very much. I'll be here Wednesday. I'll be here Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You know, this is our schedule from now on. I love you all. I thank you so much. I need to go to Goodwill and give some stuff away. <laughs> Alex, nice to see you. Have fun. Nice to meet you all. Okay. Nice Bye, to see everybody. you. Bye. Bye, my darlings.